What's going on with all three of these is back to the basics. Ada, attention, interest, desire, action. These are not going to happen effectively and together if you break some of these rules of have you been doing your marketing and advertising wrong all along i'm going to give you some mind-blowing stats that will probably convince you to change course on at least a few of the tactics that you're using and some suggestions to use word of mouth and content marketing so that you can acquire more customers and clients for less money Most of my clients have found me through social media. I do not advertise. I have never spent a penny on advertising. My name is Emily Binder. I'm a marketing strategist, consultant, speaker, and entrepreneur. I'm the founder of Beetle Moment Marketing and Wealth Voice. I focus on voice marketing, which is using Alexa, Google Assistant, recorded audio, podcasts, and anything to do with voice-first technology to help my clients with their marketing but my background is a dozen plus years working in content marketing, all things digital, social media marketing. So I take a really holistic approach to everything about building a brand, messaging your customers, and putting your best foot forward so you can ultimately drive more business. In this video, we're going to go over four surprising stats about marketing and advertising that will make you want to change course, especially on the ads that you're running today. And then I'm going to give you the best solution of all, which will cost you the least amount of money to get more leads, more sales, and ultimately create a long lasting business built on a strong foundation that is about human connection. If you're excited about learning how to use word of mouth marketing and content marketing for free to build your brand, your product or service, and stop wasting money on spray and pray advertising, give this video a thumbs up smash that subscribe button below and hit the bell when you do so you'll be notified of new videos that we put out the first thing which you need to stop doing immediately as soon as you watch this video finish the video and go turn off all your pop-up ads whether these are pop-ups on your website or pop-ups that are on other websites where you are the ad that's popping up turn them off stop people hate them they have a 73 percent disapproval rating 48 percent of people are using an ad blocker of some sort so pop-up ads and pop-up widgets on your website are two separate things. You might have pop-up ads running if you are participating in Google ads. But aside from that, the thing that you can control the fastest and just make this change right now to make for a much better UX on your site, user experience, turn off pop-ups. And most of the time, what you're trying to do, like let's think strategically, why are you trying to force something in front of somebody's face? Why are you interrupting them and shoving your message in front of them? It must be because you think they're not going to know about it otherwise. What if there was a better, more gentle and relevant way that you could put that in front of them? Well, here's an example. So on my own website, I have a flash briefing. It's a daily three minute podcast and it's an Alexa news briefing. I have a banner at the very top of my site. This is an easy thing you can turn on in Squarespace if that's the CMS you use. You do that instead of a pop-up ad in front of somebody's face because all people do when they see a pop-up is they're trying to find the X to get out of it and on mobile usually that X is tiny the target area is very small so if you look at Fitz law whenever you have anything on a screen you want to make the target area of the thing that someone's trying to accomplish large and easy to find not small and annoying which is the most common experience when it comes to pop-up ads all right so let's get rid of those pop-ups nobody likes them the second thing that you need to do in any ads that you are running, and I'm not saying ads can't be effective because sometimes they can be extremely effective. Make sure they look polished and professional and that they're on brand. In a 2019 survey, 63% of people said, most of the ads I see online don't look polished or professional. Therefore, those people don't trust that ad. Whatever you do, don't outsource the ads to another company so that let's say you're running a Facebook ad and it gets served up from a company that is not your name advertising your product that does not look good. So that's a B. It is so easy nowadays to make your graphics look good. If you have somebody on your marketing team that knows how to use Canva, which is the poor man's dumbed down version of Photoshop. I use it for some of my graphics. It's easy. It's $12 a month, maybe 13. I'll put a link below so you can get a deal on Canva. Just go into Canva and learn it. Take a couple hours and figure out how to make graphics. They have ready-made templates. They make it so easy for you. This is not sponsored by Canva in any way. My point is do that or just go on Fiverr and hire someone to do your graphics. There's no excuse for having poor graphics nowadays. The internet is abundant with free and easy or inexpensive ways for you to look good. Do not let your ads 
make your brand look bad and give people a bad taste in their mouth when they see them. This is low hanging fruit. I mean, these first two things I've mentioned, which are disable gross pop-up ads and make your ads look good. This is the easy stuff, right? All right, let's skip on to the advanced class for number three and four. Number three, make sure that the copy on your ad is not tricking people and that when they get to the final destination, whether that's a landing page or a product or some kind of experience, that it is what you promised it would be. This is the big sin when it comes to what people call clickbait where titles of articles or even social media posts with links are very inflammatory because that's what works on social media, getting people riled up, basically having a car wreck that they want to slow down and crane their neck to look at. And you do that by having inflammatory copy, but oftentimes it's not true to what the article actually says or what the landing page experience is. Okay. So don't do this. Just be honest and forthright. You just have to sound a little interesting to stand out, but you don't need to lie. Having a mismatch or a disconnect between your teaser copy, your ad copy, and the landing page experience or the product or what it actually ends up being is a recipe for disaster and abandoned carts and people just bouncing. And when bouncing is used in internet terminology, of course, like we could use this two ways. We could say, I'm a bounce, I'm out, I don't like this. Or it's, it's literally your bounce rate. A bounce rate happens when somebody lands on your page and they don't click on any links or interact with your content on your page and they leave. That's called a bounce. High bounce rate, bad. What's going on with all three of these is back to the basics. Ada, attention, interest, desire, action. These are not going to happen effectively and together if you break some of these rules of turning people off, annoying them, interrupting them with something that they don't find valuable. If you're going to be interruptive with push advertising, which is like, old school TV commercials that interrupted the middle of a show, YouTube pre-roll ads, those are interruptive. They're in your face and you can't get away. You have to wait for them to pass to get to the content you really want. What if you were the content that people really wanted instead of the interruption we have to wait for to end to get to what we want? This is content marketing. This is the entire slam dunk idea at the end of the video, but I'll get to that after the fourth no, no, which is, relying purely on advertising to do all of your marketing work for you. Look, advertising is under the umbrella of marketing. They are not the same thing. Advertising is part of marketing. Marketing is a lot more than just advertising. This is similar to the misconception so many people have about what is brand. People who think brand is just your logo. It's your color palette. It's your typography. That's the brand. No, that's the logo, the color palette, and the typography. The brand is a lot more. It's everything that you stand for. It's that intangible subconscious feeling that somebody has about your product or service. And people end up having that feeling over time based on the impressions they have from you, from your messaging, from your ads, from your customer experiences, from your product, from everything that happens. It could be packaging, it could, it could happen in store, it could be tweets, it could be ads they see, it could be a gift that comes with purchase, it could be talking to a customer service rep on the phone. These all build up to have the overall experience that customer has, the impression of the brand. And people will align with the brands that they like, the brands that stand for something that they identify with. This video is not a deep dive into brand though. I'll link below to some of my other marketing and brand tip videos. But what I really wanted to tell you about this fourth tip is you can't put all of your eggs in the basket of we're doing PPC ads or we buy email lists and send these cold, lifeless emails out and hope that 1% of the people click on it and then it's a good ROI for us because they'll attend our webinar and we'll close this many leads. Okay, I mean, that's a very rote mathematic way to approach it and there is part of marketing which is a rote mathematic discipline. There's a lot of math and marketing, but you have to take the art with the science. You have to say, what is it about our overall brand that we are communicating through our marketing? And advertising is just one piece of that. You could do a lot better than just advertising. You could do some content marketing. All right, you're watching this video. If you're still with me, we've been, what is it, seven minutes in now? I don't know. I don't have a clock going. I'm hot under the ring light here. I need to wrap this up, but I'm trying to make a little more of an in-depth video than I have before because I think that people want to know all this information. So now that we've talked about four mistakes to avoid when you're doing advertising, let's talk about some of the good stuff that you should be doing or doing more of. 
Content marketing, word of mouth, these are inherently linked. Now, word of mouth inherently implies that you are top of mind. You have a little bit of space in that brand awareness section of your customer's brain. It doesn't mean that they think about you every single day. People don't live and breathe caring about you or your brand. This is a mistake a lot of brands make on social media. Brands think, oh, we're so important. People want to hear from me. I'm butter and I'm going to tweet. That's not the way it works. But if you're like, hey, it's Thanksgiving and this is the best kind of butter to saute those mushrooms in, that's a little more relevant and timely, you see? That's the reason that somebody would want content from that brand who is butter that has a great recipe that is timely. Now, if you make that recipe available by voice, you're even more on the ball. That's a whole other video though. I'll link below to my information about what is voice marketing, which is kind of advanced class, but here we're doing some 101 on ads. We'll stick on topic for now. Just 1,000 customers can generate 500,000 conversations about a brand on social media. Word of mouth marketing is extremely powerful because it's essentially free to you, it scales, and it's the most trustworthy form of marketing. 70% of consumers don't trust ads, but 92% of consumers trust word of mouth. Word of mouth, their friends, family, or their network. People that they trust recommend your product or service. That's all there is to it. If you are doing content marketing correctly, whether that's making videos on YouTube, doing a flash briefing on Alexa, having a podcast, social media, your presence, that all helps to build not only your brand, your goodwill marketing by adding value, giving free helpful content, but your word of mouth because you're gonna be top of mind. Here's an example from my own marketing of myself and my business. Now, on my YouTube channel, I do a few different things. I actually break the cardinal rule of YouTube if you wanna be successful on YouTube, which is niche down. Pick one basic topic and do lots about that and be really good at it. I have like six topics I like to talk about. But the one example I'm gonna give you is from my videos that are about how to file an LLC. Now, this is not something that I do for my full-time job. I'm not an LLC filing attorney specialist. However, because I've gone through the process myself in multiple states, and when I did it, I couldn't find good, clear advice. Everything online was conflicting and unclear. The websites were shoddy at best. I said, why don't I just make a video? So back in 2018, I took my, like, what was it, an iPhone 7, went outdoors, of course, like some new YouTuber that doesn't know anything. And I filmed this video. It's now had over 13,000 views. And I made an update to it in 2020, which is already racking up views as well. It's a much better video, kind of know what I'm doing more now. That's just the natural evolution of YouTube video, but also social media. It's everything you're doing has a learning curve. It doesn't mean you shouldn't start because you're not perfect yet. If something is better than nothing, as long as it's not ugly. <laughs> Back to that cardinal mistake of doing bad graphics. But don't worry too much about that. The point is, on this YouTube video, I've had over 88 comments from people asking me for advice about filing their LLC in multiple states, states that I have no idea what the deal is. But frankly, I should send them that site, let me Google that for you. <laughs> this is a great one to send old people who say, how do I, insert, you know, send a text message. Uh, let me Google that for you. So 88 people have asked me, Emily, how do I file an LLC? How do I do a registered agent? Can you recommend a registered agent? And I had a couple options of how I could approach this. I could comment back and say, here's a link to book an hourly call with me. You can pay by credit card in order to access my calendar, which by the way, I use Calendly and Acuity for that, depending whether I'm on WordPress or Squarespace. These are really nice tools to protect your time. If you are a consultant or if you're a solopreneur and people are always, oh, I wanna pick your brain. By the way, don't ever use that phrase, pick your brain, kiss of death, bad news. There should not be any free advice. Maybe a tiny iota of free advice. Somebody wants to get on the phone with you or they want your expertise on something, especially that's a specialized area, like filing an LLC, you know, anybody can figure that out. But people are lazy, so they wanna comment on YouTube and just ask me, why are they asking me? I'm not a lawyer, I'm not even, a financial advisor, but I've done it and I present myself credibly. So people see other people asking me the question like, well, Emily knows how to do this. I'll just ask her and I trust her and I like her because I've been watching her YouTube, right? You feel like you know me. I feel like I know the people I watch on YouTube. I feel a personal connection with them. Same thing with the podcast hosts that I listen to every week. This is content marketing. It is free essentially to produce. I mean, sure you have 
buy your camera, spend some time editing the video, but it's free compared to advertising. And look at how impactful it is. If I were in the business of helping people file an LLC, I could take all of those comments and turn them into leads. I could close them more easily than a cold lead or a lead that I had shown my advertising to who wasn't even looking for me. If someone finds your YouTube video, they're actually looking up the thing that you're talking about. That is the warmest lead you're gonna find. This is why we do content marketing. This is why you blog. If you don't like being on video, no problem. It's not easy. It's not natural for everybody. Some people are better with audio. Maybe you'll do a flash briefing or a mini podcast. I do one every day, it's three minutes long. It's called Voice Marketing with Emily Bender. Then I make it into audiograms and I share it on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. Most of my clients have found me through social media. I do not advertise. I have never spent a penny on advertising. Not for Beetle Moment Marketing, my consultancy, and not for Wealth Voice, which is my Alexa CMS startup. Everyone comes to me because I give free, helpful content. That is word of mouth marketing friendly. That is what I recommend for you to do. Don't waste so much money on just doing advertising. Advertising is one small part of marketing. You can do so much more and you'll actually save money in the long run if you participate in content marketing and word of mouth. It has worked for me. If you're excited about content marketing, leave a comment below. Let me know what your favorite social media channel is to post your content on, whether that's YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, you name it. I'm curious to hear.